Call Keys Dan at 501-470-6386 or visit us on the web at keysdan.com or radiowhat.com. Let Keys Dan make your next thing a A big big one. one. What's up, party people? It's Keys Dan with RadioWhat.com, DJLittleRock.com, coming to you live and in living color from the Radio What Studios. And this is my podcast, What Makes You Famous? It's an extension of the RadioWhat.com internet radio station that I've been running for quite some time. And if you need DJ services, I encourage you to go to DJLittleRock.com. Yes, today on the program, Sandal Taylor. Uh, Pretty much what I know about her is she's Mrs. Pennsylvania America 2018, a beauty queen. Yes, that's who's coming on the program. And we're going to find out more about Sandal Taylor. And uh, let's see, this week's shows, I have, oh, The Rab on Friday night. I'll be the DJ, the video dance party, karaoke jam, my regular Friday night gig here in Conway, Arkansas. Come on out to the Rab. They have the full bar. The kitchen is open. The pool tables, 10 diamond regulation pool tables and a tournament. The pool tournament's going on. So find out more about that by coming to the Rab on Friday night. Uh, the karaoke portion of the show starts at 8 p.m. And we don't stop until almost 2 in the a.m. So come on out to the Rab, Conway, Arkansas. Ah, parties. You know I like doing them. Let's see. Ah, so many good things happening. Let's, oh, oh, what happened? Oh, last week, last Saturday, I got the opportunity to go see Bad Habit, uh, a young band, uh, fr- pretty much just out of high school. Uh, and I think, nah, yeah, I think they're all out of high school and they're a rock band. So I, I, uh, got out and hauled my cookies up to Russellville, Arkansas, about 45 minutes away, and got to see the boys of Bad Habit over at the Old Town Bank Sports Bar and Grill, and that was a whole lot of fun. And uh, I got to hang out with the parents, you know, because that's what you do. When, when you're old like me, you don't hang out with the kids that are there to see the band. You hang out with the parents that are there to see the band. And it was some good rock and roll, and I got a, a lot of good pictures. So find those on my Facebook page, and you could find out more about Bad Habit, the band. Ah, weddings coming up. Yes, I'm so excited. But even more so, I'm excited to talk to Sandal Taylor and find out more about this reigning beauty queen. And let's get into it. Calling Sandal Taylor now. Sandal Taylor. Hello. It's you. It's you. I thought it was you. It's me. <laughs> it's Keys Dan. Sorry what about makes you that. famous? I oh, was no problem. Me out, like I said, right at eight thirty. So I was like, oh man. Are you are you working somewhere? Is that what you were doing? I just got off. Yep. Yep. Well, fantastic. Welcome to the show. So, give the people a small bio of who Sandal Taylor is, and let me know if I'm pronouncing that correctly. It is Sandal. Um, so yes, you're, you're pretty close. You're about as close as you can get. And so I am former Mrs. Pennsylvania America 2018. I am currently holding the title of Mrs. Germany World 2019. I just actually received that title. I am an Army veteran self, a mother of two. And as you just heard, I am a, actually an instructor for cosmetology industry. Super duper. Wait, now how? All right, let's go with the first f- couple of things that you said. You're Mrs. Pennsylvania America 2018, but now you're Mrs. Germany 2019. How do you make the jump from Pennsylvania to Germany? That's a great question. It's actually a question I've been getting asked quite frequently. So the amazing thing about this organization, which is the Mrs. World Organization, that's MRS for married women, is that they have several ways that you can actually represent where you come from. So either your heritage or where you were born and or if you have dual citizen. So I'm actually representing my heritage. So my dad and my dad's family is from Germany. And so I chose to represent my heritage 
representing the country of Germany. And I was so blessed and honored to be accepted into the Mrs. World organization to be going there this year. Um, so they're actually a little bit behind on the calendar year. It works a little differently. So they actually crown for the year behind. So I'm representing Mrs. Germany World 2019, hopefully to be crowned Mrs. World 2020. So it's a little bit different from how most pageant systems work. You normally have the number of the year that you're going to compete in. This one's just a little bit different. Okay, so what month of the year did you actually get crowned Mrs. Germany 2019? I actually just received that title this month. At the beginning of this month, I just actually received the word officially from the Mrs. World organization. And so far, I've actually already made seven appearances as Mrs. Germany World 2020, including your amazing podcast. Fabulous. <laughs> All right, uh, Sandow. I'm, I'm trying to pronounce it properly. Sandow. Taylor? You got it. You got it right uh, there. Yep. Sandow. Yep. All right. Sandow Taylor. Uh, how did you get that name, Sandow? Yep. Okay, so now I have to ask you a question. Please. Are you ready to be put on the spot? I'm ready. Okay, have you ever seen the movie Conan the Barbarian with Arnold Schwarzenegger? <laughs> I have, but I don't remember a character named Sandow. Okay. <laughs> okay, well, the main character who played his love interest, her name was Valerie or Valkyrie in the movie. Yes. Her real name is Sandal Bergman, spelled the exact same way as mine, S-A-N-D-A-H-L. She just pronounces it Sandal. Bergman, and that's actually whom I was named after. I was named after a, a movie actress. Super. See, it's so wonderful how, how names get made. And the etymology of your name. Now, who picked out that name for you? Was it mom or was it dad? My, it was my mom. Yep. If my dad would have won, I would have been named something completely different. Oh, okay. Now, what would your dad have picked? It. Do you know? Uh, yes, he actually wanted to name me Galadriel or Gladrella from the book Lord of the Rings. Um, so I would have had a really cool, unique name and or story either way. I, I suspect you would, but it, I, I think you may have lucked out. Uh, I think I can pronounce yeah, Sandal I, I a, little, a little bit easier than Glendrilla. Gladriella or Galadriel is how it was pronounced in the in the book. Wow. And I've seen all the Lord of the Rings movies, but I don't think I've, I I remember the character. And no, I have not read the book. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think I need to read more books or at least listen to more books on tape, which is pretty much how I, I get my uh, consume my media these days is listening to podcasts and listening to books on tape. Yeah. And, and, and that's how it is. And that's what's the cool thing about about our error is that we can actually do that it's kind of phenomenal it is it is so sandal taylor mrs pennsylvania 2018 when did that happen and was that the first time that you were crowned as a beauty queen i'm talking to a beauty mm -hmm. queen okay so to answer your question yes it was the first title i have ever received wow. And no, it did not happen on my first try. So I have actually been competing in various things since I was little, um, more or less like um, modeling issues. So I competed in swimsuit pageants and just kind of bikini competitions and stuff like that. So way more lower levels. But the Mrs. Pennsylvania America pageant was really the first bigger pageant that I ever had entered. I did one before that. And I competed for three years in a row. Before I actually obtained the title of Mrs. Pennsylvania America 2018, I was Mrs. Allegheny County for three years and kept coming back and coming back. And if I wouldn't have won, I would have came back one more, a couple more tries until I, would, I, I finally got my dream. Okay, so before you were a Mrs., you were competing in, in various types of, of uh, competitions, uh, beauty-wise, I guess. Is, is it a beauty pageant? Or, am I pronouncing it right, or is it a, a, a talent show? What, uh, how can you... So, the Mrs. World Organization is a beauty pageant. Okay. However, I do feel like it goes more beyond physical beauty. It also goes with your intellect and your how you carry yourself. So, there is an interview portion... It's done typically one-on-one. -on -one. Mm -hmm. Then there is the swimsuit portion and evening gown. In my pageant, we don't have to have a talent, but I do have a talent if I ever were to need one. All right, Sandow. Since you mentioned your parents, I, before I, I ask you how you got the nerve to get into this these uh, competitions, because competitions would, would frustrate me. Okay, I, I, okay, put it on the table. I'm a, 
a DJ, but I also host karaoke a lot. And they they have they want to have uh, karaoke competitions from time to time. And I always think they're a popularity contest. So to judge someone, I you know the 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 judge not lest she be judged and that kind of thing. It's it's been instilled into my head. Uh, before I get into how you got the nerve uh, to to get into these. Uh, pageants uh where did you grow up uh, how, 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 where, where are you from so i did actually grow up here in pennsylvania i grew up in the city of pittsburgh so i'm a Steeler fan sorry mm. for those listening that might not be a Steeler <laughs> fan even though they're not doing well right now um but i have been luck- luck- lucky enough to travel yeah um throughout this gorgeous nation and as well outside of the country as well I've been able to travel. So born in Pittsburgh or in the surrounding area? Born in Pittsburgh, yes. Mm-hmm. Wow. How's growing up in Pittsburgh? It's truly amazing. Um, I will tell you one thing. It's normally cold and rainy here. We are actually the second most rainy city next to Chicago. Mm. So one day I'm going to move somewhere warm. Um, but I love being from Pittsburgh. It's a beautiful city. If you've never been here, there's so much to do. It's the only city with an entrance. It's it's truly breathtaking when you actually go through the tunnels and see the city. And to really be from here, it's way different. You know, everybody's genuine and they're nice and they're kind. We say funny words like yins and an at. And, you know, you really learn to love your city. And I, I just can't, I can't imagine being from somewhere else or living somewhere else whenever I was younger. It's really kind of given me my roots of who I am. Yeah, you've gotten to travel all over the country, so you have some kind of a perspective. Now, when you say there's an entrance to the city, how do you mean? So in, when you come to Pittsburgh, there's only one way to get into the city is through a tunnel. So you have two tunnels that you can go through, and you can't get to the city any other way. So you have to go through the tunnel to get to the city. It's kind of like uh, – And it's only not, I don't want to say an island because it's not completely surrounded by water, but it's connected by three uh, rivers. So there's three rivers that surround the city. So you have to go through the tunnel and over the bridge. So immediately when you go through the tunnel, it's like, bam, here comes Pittsburgh. You see that city skyline and you just go through that tunnel and it's right there, like in your face. So it's actually deemed the only city with an entrance. Sandell Taylor, you know, it would be scary to only have one entrance in and one entrance out, but I'm from the Florida Keys, and we also have only one entrance in, by road anyway, and one entrance out, yeah. US-1. So I'm familiar with that, but I didn't know yeah. Pittsburgh was set up that way. So there, well, the way are there ferries? There are, two different, there are two different main um, tunnels, like I said. But there's a bunch of different ways to get into the city, but those are like the two biggest ways that most people know. So when you're traveling from out of town, you're going to go through one of those. Um, But yeah, it is. I I guess I could see that as long as you know your way around, you'll be okay, though. Oh, um, yeah. It it sounds pretty cool. I haven't spent a lot of time north of the Mason-Dixon line, so I'm kind of excited to go to uh, the city of Pittsburgh one day. I I, want to travel up that way and and visit the the northeast of our great nation. I've been all over the south uh, and the you know, from east to west, south of I-40, I guess, would be uh, where where my travels have taken me. Now, uh, your parents, you said, is that from Germany? So my dad's family is from Germany. My dad is mostly German. My mom is more more Irish and Scottish. So my dad is more German, and I take more after him. Um, it was actually really cool to get my ancestry DNA kit back because... You know, you grow up and, you know, like I said, your parents kind of like tell you where you come from and stuff like that. So when I was growing up, we learned a lot about both of our heritages, both German and Irish. And we learned a lot about the culture and how it does. And I actually know um, a little bit of German as well as I'm actually still learning German now. And I have a really good friend who lives over there now. It's pretty cool. So I grew up kind of learning a lot about where we come from and stuff like that. So that's what really initiated me trying to get more involved with my heritage and get more down into my roots and represent my heritage this year. Okay. So you say Sandal Taylor that you uh, identify more with your dad, but I don't want to discount your mom. What did you learn about Irish yeah, and Scottish? Awesome. Yeah. What did you learn about Irish and Scottish from your mother? 
So my mom's maiden last name and mine as well. Um, my mom's maiden name was Shannon. So super Irish. Yeah. Um, you know, we learned a lot of different things about like just historics of where they actually came from, like where their parents grew up, how they lived, how they kind of worked for different things. It was really interesting to learn about, you know, in their family culture, a lot of the things are passed down through generation to generation. Like it's almost like an iconic deal to learn, you know, your grandmother's recipe for this and your grandfather's, you know, shoe keeping, how they, he kept his shoes and all those cool aspects. So that's one of the things that my parents were able to teach me in addition to all the other life lessons that your parents teach you, you know, such as respect and kindness and all those things. But yeah, my mom is really, you know, big influence in my life and, and my dad as well. He's actually, my dad is one of the reasons why I chose my platform. Mm -hmm. um, and my mom is just one of those people that just support you kind of no matter what you do. But well, before we get to your, your dad, what, what kind of work did your mom do? My mom's actually a nurse. So oh. my mom is an LPN. So she has done a lot of, a lot of different nursing. So she currently takes care of individual patients. So she does a couple different people that she has and takes care for. Wow. Still doing that. That's great. That's great. Now your dad influenced you so much so that you decided to take the Germany, uh, the, the German routes in your Miss World endeavors, uh, Mrs. World, I'm sorry, endeavors. So how did dad influence you with, uh, with the Germany and the German stuff? Yeah. So I, chose Germany because, like I mentioned to you um, earlier, is that I just take after my dad more as far as like how I look, how I speak, um, and also my DNA is more German than Irish. So that's why I chose that route. I just had that more influence. Mm -hmm. And for me, with his influence, so my dad suffered a heart attack and stroke in 2005 oh. that left him completely paralyzed. Mm -hmm. And my dad is a Vietnam veteran, Navy yeah. Vietnam veteran. So that really kind of struck me to my core because I was very young at the time. I actually had just graduated high school. Mm. It was just I just turned 18 at the time. I was younger when I graduated high school. I was 17 when I graduated. 2005. And watching him go through that and kind of seeing that made me really realize that this was something that was really serious. Mm. And had maybe we been home that day, his life would have been completely changed. We weren't actually home when he had a heart attack and stroke. So mm. it was so bad that when they actually found my father, he was found on the floor completely diaphoretic, which means he was completely sweating from the inside out. Yeah. Um, he really had lost a lot of weight. And that's really actually a long time to be suffering from a stroke. And so that's why he's completely paralyzed on this left hand side. So he'll never be able to walk again. Oh. Going through that and rehabbing him so that he could actually attend my wedding Oh. physically working with him every day for years to actually be able to have him sit in a wheelchair for a period of time really made me realize that education about heart health and education about stroke awareness and heart health awareness and teaching people CPR really came to me and said, you know what? I couldn't and I can't, I couldn't do anything about my dad, mm -hmm. but maybe I can do something for somebody else. And well, that's really what sparked it to get it started. So through that tragedy came the inspiration for your platform. Yeah, you know, I I admire your dad Absolutely. for for what he's done for the country. I I, I suspect. I mean, a, a veteran of you said Vietnam. Yeah, mm -hmm. he was in the Navy in Vietnam. Yeah, and then like I mentioned to you earlier, I'm also married to a veteran. So oh, my husband my. is an Army veteran. Fabulous. And so it's this big line over here. Um, and then, yes, he did. It. My father really started the influence of my platform. And it just it was phenomenal to me to see the spark of that. So it started with my dad. Mm -hmm. And then fast forward a few years later, I was 19 and I had my son. Oh. Um, my son was born with a heart murmur that thankfully didn't affect him and it still doesn't. But it's just something you have to be aware of as a mom that it could affect him later. It could not affect him. And then a few years after that, I actually thought that I had a, sh a heart attack myself at the age of 25, which I ended up not having a heart attack. Ooh. Ended up finding out that I have MVP, which is not most valuable player. It stands for mitral valve prol prolapse, which means I have a leaky valve in my heart, which thankfully doesn't affect me as bad as it could. Um, it just can affect me at any given time. So sometimes my heart pumps really fast for no reason. 
and I'll be able to live through it for a long time unless it gets worse. And then we'll kind of take that road when it gets there. Um, but it really kind of made me aware of how many people are affected by heart disease. One out of three people in the American will be affected by heart disease and in actually in the entire world. So it's very outstanding to me, like how serious it is. It's the number one cause of death in the whole entire world. Wow, Sandell Taylor. It's this, it's amazing to me that through the, the yes, the tragedy that your father suffered, you came up with a, an idea, a platform, a way to help other people. And that's something that, that, people don't may not know about pageants is yes the women are beautiful yes they they parade and and they they wear these nice dresses and and the swimsuits and and such and and nice uh you know to to view but also you can inspire and you could help other people uh with these platforms using your your um your reign as as queen as beauty queen but you, you how, how do you how do you um help to to raise awareness and and get people um help for what they have no absolutely that i love that question and uh thank you for asking me that i view the crown and sash like a big giant megaphone um, so as Sindel, I educate people every day. Yes. I work with the American Heart Association. I work for the um, Outskirts Association with the American Heart Association. So they have a national coalition for heart health in the other countries. And so I partner with them a lot to research education. So my first goal is helping with CPR. You can learn CPR online today at the American Heart Association dot org. And you can learn hands-only CPR online right this minute. Um, It doesn't cost you anything. You can literally learn it right now. My goal is to initiate people to actually learn and be certified in CPR. You can save somebody's life. Hands-only CPR increases somebody's life chance by 40%. If you do CPR with the percussions and mouth-to-mouth resuscitation, you increase their life expectancy by 60%. The other aspect that I really push for is education about simple tips and tricks Mm. um i don't know about you but how busy are you during the day pretty busy okay so if i could teach you two or three things that would be simple that would flow with your life about heart health do you think you would be able to do it i certainly would i was a paramedic for a while but i i I see where you're getting i should play the the part where yes i know nothing about medicine (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> but exactly. But even if you said, you know, I do know a little bit of things about it, but you know what? Right. I work 40 hours a week. I don't know how to sit down in. That's where I come in. So I actually work with people and make a specialized plan for them to fit heart health into their day. Something as simple as, and you'll probably laugh at this. Um, one of my friends who I work with, she does squats every time she goes to the bathroom. She'll go into the bathroom, do a couple of squats and then, you know, go and use the bathroom. Um, that's her way to get her exercise in because she doesn't have time to work out during the day. She doesn't have time. I could see um, where that'd be dangerous. The thing about, <laughs> huh? I could see where that would be dangerous. Maybe after you do your business. It, it can be. It can be. It just depends on how you get it in. Another friend of mine, she parks at the opposite end of her parking lot to get that extra walk to work. So it's something that simple that maybe we don't necessarily think of right away that can help you just get your fitness in or get that little heart help tip and trick to help you kind of start your journey. Oh, you're giving people gems and Sandal Taylor. First of all, the the online CPR, I figured there had to be something online to, to teach, but I had no... I, I had not researched it myself. So you've given people that at least to go to the American Heart Association, find it online, learn some CPR. If you can, take a class because that is so important. Me, I, I have high blood pressure. So, uh, you know, and I take medicine for it. So you might save my life. How about that? <laughs> the people Absolutely. that are listening. And and that's one life. Absolutely. And I, I'm definitely a huge advocate for that. And a lot of classes are offered for free now, too. So mm. that's a, bo- a bonus. Oh, so do, do you uh, do you get to teach any of this? Or, or is this something that you've, you've learned? You've learned CPR, I'm guessing? 
Yes, I am certified in CPR. I will maintain that. Um, yes. I do not teach CPR yet. Mm-hmm. I am working on getting my CPR's instructor certification right now. And my plan is, and I've had this plan now for about three to four years, and yes. it's actually in the working. So I've already had a venue, and I'm not going to release that quite yet. Right. But I've had a plan since I started competing four years ago to host the world's largest CPR class yes. by 2020. And I'm still working on that plan. And like I said, I've already locked in a venue. Um, We're hoping to have the date very late in 2020. Um, We're just kind of working out a few details. And we're actually going to try to break a world record. Sandow Taylor, saving lives. Yes, these are this is potential things that you can do to save lives. And the the squatting thing where you just, yes. and, and, And I've heard people park far away from their jobs and even take the stairs just simple little things little tips to help increase your your heart health it's fantastic i yeah oh so tell me what's your exercise regimen in a typical week uh, for for example do you get to go to the gym or do you do a lot of cardio or, or anything or yourself Okay, so a lot of people think I'm a little crazy when this happens. So it depends on whether or not I hit the snooze button. (laughs) We all need our beauty sleep. So (laughs) I have been really working to get up at 5.30 every day to work out with an amazing group of my pageant friends and also exercise friends. So I actually became a Beachbody coach, which regardless of your opinion about their products, it's a really good tool to do a workout wherever you are. So me and a group of ladies that work out with Beachbody um, workouts, we do an online workout together so that we can motivate each other at 5.30 every morning. And then I get ready for work and go to work after that. Fantastic. Now, I'm not familiar with Beachbody products. I I have no opinion. Uh, Is there something wrong with them? Some people don't like their product line. Um, I personally love it. I've never had any issue with it, but I know some people do not like their product line. So I always will tell people, you know, you have to try something for yourself. Just like some people don't like certain teachers, you have to try it for yourself and make your own opinion. But what I do like about it is, like I mentioned to you before, they have Beachbody on demand. So it's just like I can literally work out from my phone, from my laptop, wherever I can get the Internet, and I can work out right there and then at my fingertips so I don't have to go to the gym if you don't have weights you can use your own body weights there's modifications so there's all levels of fitness on it and you can do almost any workout you have access to over 100 workouts so I really enjoy it for that factor because it's simple affordable and an easy way to kind of get your workout wherever you want it to get in how cool is that Sandal Taylor now you say you have friends that you work out with at 5 30 in the morning yes do they do you meet up at a gym or you go out to a park or, or No, we actually so I work out we all work out in our basements typically. So they I don't know if about them, but I work out in my basement, um, for the most part. And I think a couple of them have uh like a room, but most of us work out in our basements. Now, is this oh, do you connect online? And you say you're yeah, working we out connect together. Online. Oh. Yeah. We connect online almost like through we use um I'm not sure if you're familiar with um Oh, I'm blanking on the name right now. It's kind of like Skype, but it's a. Uh, I'm blanking on the name right now. Yes, I, like I, I think online... I've, I've used Skype uh, primarily when I do. It's very similar to Skype, but it's not Skype. I can't remember the That's, name of it right like, now. But there's an online yeah. like. Group I'm sure. I'm sure you'll remember it as we as we chit chat. <laughs> yeah, as soon as soon as we're done, I'll be like, "Oh, I remember the name now," <laughs> and I'll have to post it in the comments, or I'll go look. Oh, it's Zoom. There we go. It's Zoom meetings. There Zoom. We go. Zoom. Okay. Meetings. I've had somebody like invite me to yeah, do so that. We do, yep. We go through Zoom, and we're all watching. Uh, whoever the lead is for that day, we all kind of take turns. Their computer is playing the video, and we're all working out together on wow. cool. Zoom is that yeah, it's really cool the internet has brought this whole world closer together it, it can it can i know absolutely. i know it absolutely, tears people the apart people i work out with are in different states oh that's great so you're you're working out okay this is me imagining you at 5 30 in the morning wherever you are working out with all of your beauty friends and just getting in great shape using this this uh online platform what a great what yeah. great inspiration is that <laughs> 
Yep, and you can come join us. So if you want to get up tomorrow at five thirty, I'll give you the link. You know, I get up at five thirty and I get on the radio. So there you go. Uh, hey, hey, I love it. I love it. That's amazing. And I get to chit chat with people on the podcast. What makes you famous? And you're already kind of famous. You know, uh, I never know where these conversations are going to go. And here. All I really knew about you was that you're Sandall Taylor, Mrs. Pennsylvania, America 2018, and now Mrs. Germany 2019. Fantastic. But you're also an exercise guru, a heart health uh, enthusiast, uh, helping to to get people uh, um, familiar with how to keep their heart in shape. Uh, So... What other things do you do? What, what, you were working hard all day. Do you want to disclose what you were doing? Yeah. So I actually, like I said, I'm a cosmetology instructor. So I work at a beauty school. Yeah. Um, I typically work during the day. So normally by this point, I'm at home. But I actually worked a double. So I've been working since 9 o'clock this morning. And it's 9 o'clock right now. Wow. Um, so I work from pretty much 9 to 9. Um, and I love it. I get to teach hair, skin, and nails pretty much all day long. So I love it. I love what I do. Um, I absolutely, it's it's really an amazing job. So before you become a, an instructor, you had to have gone to beauty school. Uh, when did you do that? I did. So I a lot of people actually kind of are surprised by this, but I've actually been doing hair for 15 years. I'm only 32. Wow. So I actually went to cosmetology school when I was in high school. Um, I went to a VoTech program, so some schools offer it throughout their high school for no charge. So if your school does that, I definitely recommend it. So I got all my schooling actually before I even graduated high school. And I graduated high school with my cosmetology license. I came back in 2014 for my instructor's license, and I actually completed that program within three and a half months. Took my um, licensing for the cosmetology instructor program, and I've been teaching at the school ever since. I've actually been working at the school now for about five years. Super go-getter, Sandal Taylor. That is fantastic. You came out of school with a a tool, with a a trade that you can actually use. That's great. A lot of people come out of school and don't have any idea of what they're going to do. Should I go to college? Should I go straight to work? Should I go wash dishes? No. You had a, a trade that... Yes. Well, I took an ASVAB test when I was in high school, and the top two things were photographer and beautician. I like to take a lot of pictures, and I guess I could see where I could have been a beautician. I, I, I appeal to people's vanity, you know, want to make people look good and as good as they can. Is that something that, that you've enjoyed throughout your life? I do, and I really love the teaching aspect of it because – you know, I get to kind of watch these girls and gentlemen, I have a gentleman too, right. um, kind of start, like you said, kind of really, some of them have some knowledge, some of them have no knowledge, and really watch them blossom into these amazing artists. And that's really, like, amazing for me because I get to teach them hair, skin, and nails too. But in my program, they're young adults. Some of them are older, some of them are younger. But I also get to teach them life lessons. So even though I'm young, you know, I've learned a lot of stuff just from being in the industry, from working at various jobs, and I love to be able to teach them more than what they need to know, but just something that will help them along the way. Now, Sandell Taylor, every time I go to the beauty school, and I do go to the beauty school and get my hair cut, and this is something that I recommend, especially to the to the guys. Let, let them do whatever they want to your hair because they can always buzz it off at the end, and that happens quite a, quite a bit. But I do see a lot of different hair colors on a lot of the ladies that are there. How many different hair colors have you had in your hair since you were 15? Oh, um, (laughs) to be honest with you, I have to say not that many. Okay. Um, So I have been pretty much the normal, typical colors, blonde, brunette, redhead. And I've been pretty much those four colors. I haven't really gotten to do any of the like, crazy colors yet just because I it to myself I'm a little bit more conservative with the way that I look and the way that I dress because just because I'm also a mom yeah. of two young young children and I have to kind of be more along the lines of a professional at, you know with being an educator I have to present myself and also you know me now doing beauty pageants I prefer just to kind of keep my look more conservative but I plan on doing all those fun colors when I get older, whenever, like, you know, nobody can really tell you anything else. But, like, yeah, that will be cool. 
I could see Grandma Sandal Taylor in the in the wheelchair hanging out at the at the old folks' home there in Pennsylvania and just oh. uh, coloring your hair. That's <laughs> and each other's. Oh hair. yeah, but I plan on being somewhere else warm at that point, and I'll plan on being in Pennsylvania when I'm older. As soon as my kids are graduating and they're a little older, we're 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 gonna move for sure. I'm, I've that's been on my list. We like to travel, but I I got to get out of this cold weather. Well, well, perhaps we'll be growing. uh, We'll be sitting side by side in in the Florida Keys uh, where it's sunny. (laughs) Hey, I love it. I've been to the Keys once before. Um, It's a long drive. I drove down there, actually. It's 18 hours from Pittsburgh. I did. Yeah, I did it from Conway, Arkansas. It's about 20 hours. That is about right. (laughs) Oh, Oh, wow. Wow. Oh, fantastic. That's far. So, Talking to Sandal Taylor up there in Pittsburgh, PA, uh, beauty queen, amongst other things, but also a teacher. Uh, you know, uh, oh, and I, I did mention that, to, uh, that you should get your hair cut by the students. Let them do what they want. Let, let them, uh, you know, shave one side of your head up and, and, and give you a spike and maybe put a little color in. Because, uh, you know, at the end, after they get their grade, I, I, I say, okay, just buzz the rest off. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, I especially think for men, and I don't say that if you wear your hair long, maybe not, but if you are short, if you wear your hair short, it's going to grow back in a couple of weeks. Now, yep. ladies, you know, if you have longer hair, you know, the nice thing about going to a school is that you should always have a teacher there helping the student. So you're always going to leave looking and feeling beautiful and confident, and you're going to save a lot of money. Our, our products, are we only charge for the material, so you're going to save a ton of money. Most of the time, a third of what you would pay at a salon. All right. Well, tell them which school you're at in, in Pittsburgh, PA. Maybe they'll come around and visit. So I teach at South Hills Beauty Academy. Um, and that is located actually in a city called Dormont. So it's right outside of Pittsburgh. And yeah. um, they can come visit me there anytime <laughs> or they can message me on Instagram or Facebook. I do take clients as well um, outside of the school myself. Um, so I do take clients as well. All right. So living in Pittsburgh, uh, you know, I'm, I'm from Miami. So I have my heart is is with the Dolphins, even though they don't do that I well. Understand. You know, ever since Dan Marino left, uh, they haven't really they haven't really caught fire yet. Yet, and I remember. Well, I, I'm quite a bit older than you, so I remember 1972 a little bit when the Dolphins had their perfect year, their perfect season, 13 wins. They went to the Super Bowl. They won, and this is with uh, Bob Greasy as the. Um, as the quarterback and Don Shula as the coach, but you're a Pittsburgh Steeler fan, if I'm not mistaken. Tell me about that. That's that's correct. Um, so I like to use the comment: "I was born in a terrible town, and I will probably die in a terrible town." That's a true fact. Um, I love being from Pittsburgh, and both of my kids were actually when they were born. I wrapped them around in a terrible towel. Now, I hate to admit this, but my son also likes another NFL team currently. He's young, so, you know, we got to morph him back into a Steeler fan. <laughs> but, you know, I let it slide. I let it slide because he's young. He's only 11, so I let it slide for now. <laughs> um, but I love being from the city. One of the reasons that I love it is because, like I mentioned to you earlier, it's really just a home-knit city. So when you go to these games, I'm sure you know, tailgating, it's crazy. Well, imagine being inside the city where, you know, like I said, there's only two different entrances. They, people come across their boats, and it just, it's really, really cool. The other cool thing, which I don't know if you knew this, mm. but did you know that there is a Steelers bar in almost every state in America? Ah, I did not know this. I know that there's Steeler yeah. fans so, right here in Conway, Arkansas, really close to Little Rock, Arkansas. There are Steeler fans, and I didn't know. And there probably is a Steeler bar somewhere around here. Yeah, I don't know where it is and if there is one in New York State, but in most states they have a Steeler bar, which yeah. is really cool. Well, we don't have an NFL There's team. There's even so- one in Alaska. What? <laughs> yeah. That's that's almost yep. as far as you can go in these So, I mean, how many teams can say that? How many teams can say, well, we have a, uh, a bar in almost every state? Yeah. You know? I don't... I, 
did not know this. You are teaching things, Sandal Taylor. That's fantastic. All right, so you get out of high school, what, 2005, and where do you go from, from there? D- did you just go straight into the cosmetology, or you got married pretty quick, right? So I actually, well, I was with my husband. Um, we actually started to date in 2010 ah, okay. and we got married in 2015 okay. so we were actually been a power couple for almost 10 years now Super. um we've been together for a long time so it's hard for me to imagine my life before him yeah. but right now at high school i did work in the cosmetology industry mm-hmm. and it's weird for me to say this but if i call myself like a jack at of all trades like jack but you know jill version jill of all trades Mm-hmm. master of none so i have done a little bit of everything so i worked in the fitness industry for a little bit i actually worked for the internal revenue service for the irs for a little bit yeah. um i've done management i've done like working at a diner you name it i've probably done it i like that sandal taylor you have a lot of different interests and and you say you were, were in pageants from a, an early age. Let's get into that. Where where did you start? What was the first thing that you competed in? Uh, was it in so, grade school or high school? It was. I was younger. I was about, I think I was about four or five. Hmm. And I did a, what was now is Barbizon modeling competition. It was called something different back then. And I did a competition to be scouted as a model. It was like the very first thing I ever did. Um, and I, I don't remember doing it, but I, you know, was, you know, saw all the photos of it doing it. So when I, you know, was researching, like, well, why do I like this kind of industry? You know, that's kind of where it started. And then, like I said, I did various things for really modeling. Um, I was really big into modeling because my dad was a photographer growing up. Wow. And I just loved kind of that aspect of putting hair, skin, and nails, and makeup together and making this beautiful portrait. So I did a lot of work with modeling competitions, runway competitions, fashion competitions, hair competitions, stuff like that. Um, And then myself, I got into bikini competitions, which are a little bit different, um, swimsuit competitions and stuff like that. And that was really kind of like what sparked my interest in looking for something else. Now, so the, that's the, kind of where it all started. The bikini competitions, like uh, you're talking about, like the the suntan lotion things, because we had a lot of those um, so in, in the keys. A little bit of difference. So I've done stuff like um, it's called like Hawaiian Tropic right. beauty pageant now. So like, right. not, not like competitive, like OPC and like NPC, like the National Physique Competition. Right. More or less like swimsuit bikini no I, I remember that i worked yeah. at, 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 in the fire department down in the florida keys but we also you know as firefighters we got invited to do different things and one of our our menial tasks was to judge a beauty contest for the hawaiian twa- tropic down in, in at the tiki bar in the, in the florida keys so yes it, and that it, was probably really really hard for you to do oh it was terrible you know and then you know they made us oil uh, can you be the oiler please you uh, i don't know it 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 was my my uh was it my crazy 20s and my reckless youth and i guess that's how i spent it was in the florida no i love it (laughs) i always tell people that pageants may not be for you you should try one i really truly believe everybody should try to compete in a pageant at least once Mm-hmm. For a couple of different reasons. But if you feel like you don't want to get on stage or, you know, some people have stage, right? You should judge a pageant, judge a beauty pageant, because then you know what goes into that. You know, like you mentioned before, and I think you said it perfectly, um, this beauty pageant that I'm competing in, the Mrs. Ward organization, they go beyond beauty. So they really yes. look at the whole woman. And when I tell you, I've, I've been blessed to stand on the stage that I'll be standing on as Mrs. Pennsylvania America 2018. Hmm. When I tell you that there are 52, when I compete in Pennsylvania, there's 52 contestants. Um, there's a national first runner-up, and then all 50 states plus one of the national first runner-up. Wow. And every single woman there was an accomplished, driven woman with a platform and a reason to be there. It's, it's an, a phenomenal feeling. It's These fantastic. women... I mean, are outstanding. Some of them are doctors, lawyers, activists, 
I mean, you name it, it was on that stage. So for me now to be able to stand on this stage as Mrs. As Mrs. Germany World, competing for Mrs. World, I can't even imagine who I'm going to be standing next to. It's going to be truly phenomenal. These are some really accomplished women now, that are out here doing amazing when things. When you're competing, Sandal Taylor, you not only compete, but you also make li- lifelong friendships, I've, I've under- I understand, when you're doing these competitions. You... You make friendships, is that right? That is true. A lot of people picture, like, the negative Hollywood version of pageantry. Mm -hmm. And while I'm not going to lie, you very rarely see it, but it has. I have heard and Mm -hmm. have had friends that that has happened to. Most of the time, it's very extremely positive. In my experience in pageantry with the Mrs. World organization, I have made truly lifelong friends. I still talk to my roommate from Mrs. America, Mrs. Maryland, America 2018. Shout out to my roomie. Yeah. Um, she's a gorgeous, driven person. I, When I competed at Mrs. Pennsylvania, America, I still talk to girls from all three years yeah. that I competed in, as well as the girls who competed when I gave up my crown. I still talk to those women as well. And, so we and, all and know, maintain yeah. contact and keep in touch, and it's it truly... They call it a sisterhood for a reason. I now have 52 plus sisters, (laughs) one in every state, and also the sisters from my own state that, you know, I can call on and count on for support. And it it really, truly is like that. It's amazing. That is amazing. And and, and you work out with a lot of them uh, at 530 in the morning, don't you? (laughs) Yes, I work out with about four girls. Um, (laughs) Two of them have competed they're not competing right now. Right. And then two of them don't compete at all. But we're all we, we're all in like the beauty, I call it, industry. They're <laughs> all fitness kind of industry. And it, it's really fun. That's inspirational. You, are, you as a, a beauty queen, and, and should I call you beauty queen? Or is there another title that, that you prefer? You can call me whatever you like as long as it's not a bad name. Oh, okay. See, well, some people <laughs> might be triggered by that. Might be might say, ooh, he's calling her a beauty queen. She's so much more than that. I know you're so much more than that, Sandal Taylor. <laughs> you, you've, you've already been. Well, thank you. Yeah, you've already been. I, I try to be more than just what everybody perceives as beauty right. on the outside. I try to portray that light from within because that's truly who I am you know I will give you the shirt off my back and I'll help you if I can and I want to portray that to the world you know just to be kind now, be kind to one another because yeah. there's enough room for us all now you mentioned the, the dark side of beauty pageants has anybody ever stole your Aquanet what, what, what was the worst thing that 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 happened or that you've heard happened at at, at the uh, competitions so, like I said, I've never witnessed this in person or um, have had it experienced to me. Mm-hmm. Um, but um, this was, again, a completely different pageant system. Mm-hmm. But one of my um, friends happened to have her gown that she was competing in just completely go missing. Oh. Um, and the day she was competing, it was she had it backstage and it went missing. They did find it, um, but that was probably the worst thing I heard. I, I don't know what happened. Like I said, I wasn't there, but... I've never experienced that. I uh, again, I wasn't there, so I would tell you guys that that normally doesn't happen. I feel like yeah. it was probably just misplaced, or she, maybe she put it somewhere, you know, somewhere else that you know, or maybe they put it away safely for her. But she they ended up finding it; it was fine. But I've had really great experiences to the point where, like I mentioned before, we're backstage and we're pinning to each other's stashes. Yeah. Um, we're backstage and we're making sure that your swimsuit is on right. I had a girl lend me her shoes because my heel broke. Um, You know, all those things actually happen backstage, and it's really a phenomenal feeling. So, like I said, I've never had that negative experience. And like I said, I, you know, it's very rare if you do have it. And like I said, I would just really focus on those positive aspects. And that's what you're going to see is all that positivity backstage of really people loving and congratulating you. That's what I want to hear, Sandal Taylor, is people helping people. You're back there. Yes, you're technically in, quote, competition, but you should be helping each other. And that's 
that's an inspiration in itself. You, you're supposed to be in some kind of competition. Now, you think football players would be helping each other if they were in different teams? Mm, probably not. <laughs> I, I, I could see somebody taking somebody else's shoulder pads and, uh, and, and absconding with them. But I'm so glad that the worst thing that ever happened was that that you've heard of is that somebody misplaced the gown because all's well that ended well. They found the gown. Yep, exactly. And like I said, that's like the worst probably that I remember um, hearing about. And again, that like I said, I have never had that experience. Yeah, I've had truly positive experiences, and I'm not just saying that. Um, you know, and like I said, I've walked out of there with some amazing new friends and I will say family, you know, like I said, I talk to the girls all the time, some more frequently than others, just because we might live a little bit closer or whatnot or have a little bit more in common, but we all stay in contact and that's a really cool, cool aspect of it. All right, Sandow Taylor, Mrs. Germany, 2019. Let's uh, let's back up to your first big uh, win, uh, your reigning queen of last year, uh, Mrs. Pennsylvania, 2018. Where did that take you uh, once you won the crown? And what what month was it that you won the crown? Yes, so I did win in 2018. That is correct, and it allowed me to participate in the mrs america organization well, so what, what month a, excuse me what month did you did you win that may 5th 2018 may 5th. okay so the I middle of the year because okay. my yeah. my hashtag 2018 is when i won yeah okay yep. Okay, so yeah, so May of um, 2018. So, so from there, you yeah. win. You, 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 okay, that competition. Tell me a, a little bit about it. How did how did you feel? Uh, you know, as they were whittling away the girls, and how many how many ladies were in this? Um, so there were over ten, if I remember correctly. I'd have to probably go back and look because my mind is escaping on the exact number. Right. Um, but it was honestly, it was truly unbelievable i still don't believe i went one to this day right like i still think back to myself and was like was this really me did this really happen i pinched myself a lot <laughs> um because truthfully if you actually watch my crowning moment which you can watch it on youtube oh, okay i was in complete disbelief i actually thought that they called my name for the first runner-up and i thought that the other lady beside me her name is kate Puccio and she's phenomenal I actually was like oh my god you won congratulations I was so excited for her and then she's like no sweetheart you won wow and I was just in complete shock um I'm pretty sure my director had to yell at me to breathe a few times because <laughs> I like kind of forgot to breathe it was very surreal and just humbling I was honored and just happy and it's so hard to explain because I, I literally just can't explain it. I was just in complete disbelief and shock and awe and just truly honored and humbled to have finally captured my dream of three years, you know, wanting to represent my state. Yeah. So leading up to this competition, you were already uh, some kind of a, a, a beauty queen. You've already competed. You, you were re reigning for three years as as what? Mrs. Allegheny County. Allegheny County. That's the county that you live yep. in now? Yep, Allegheny. Yep, A-L-L-E-G-H-E-N-Y. And you it's held that title in Pittsburgh. for three years? Yes, that's correct. Okay, and, and was that also a Mrs. competition as well? Yes, yep, that was Mary, yep. Now, how does that differ from, I guess, well, besides the the miss uh, the miss and the misses uh, do you ever get to meet the miss and the misses and the and the teens and the petites okay that's a that's a good question so mm -hmm. it depends on your system mm -hmm. so our system which is the misses america system mm -hmm. this year in 2018 was the first year that they actually opened up a miss division which is miss hey. but what was cool about their division it's called miss for America, M-I-S-S, -S, is that it was open to any woman who was over the age of 18 that basically was not married. So you could have been single, widowed, or divorced and still compete, which was amazing oh. because there's really no other system like that. 
for the MISS division, M-I-S-S, your typical age range is between 18 and 25. Mm-hmm. Sometimes you get to 27, depending on the system. But the biggest thing in most systems is that you cannot have kids. So for me, being 19, having a child, I was already eliminated from that. I could never compete in that system because I had a child at 19. Okay, okay. I had to wait until I got married to compete. So I was never allowed to compete in other systems because I had a child. Well, big thanks to your husband for for, for making you eligible. Good job. (laughs) Yeah, my husband is amazing. Um, like I said, we've been together now for about 10 years. He's the, he's the rock, you know, he's, he's my rock. He's my yin to my yang. Um, I don't know sometimes why he's still married to me, but he, he's really an amazing man. Um, if you meet him, you, you would, you would love him. <laughs> well, Sandal Taylor, it takes a certain kind of, of person, a certain, certain kind of man to, to to be able to have the confidence to let you go off into the world and and be i guess you're with the, the world rather than just be at home in in the little family bubble as my family likes to call it you know you you have to you get to inspire other people outside of your own home and, and th- that takes a certain kind of fella that can handle that and, and uh, it sounds like you've got that fella yep yeah, he's amazing he's truly supportive You know, he comes to my events when he wants. I do a lot of events where my family can come, my kids can come. If he can't come to the event, he's watching the kids. He cooks dinner. He helps me clean. He makes sure we're organized because my biggest thing is organization. (laughs) Um, Like I mentioned, I was working today, so he's watching the kids, taking care of that for me. Um, He's cheering me on from home, watching the live streams if he can't be there in person, um, sending his friends and family um, this year, he kind of took it up a notch, so he's really helping me kind of with my fitness. He's helping me get up. He's helping me prep. He um, he's really kind of giving it a real gun ho because he knows that this is a, this is a really big deal for me. I've never competed at an international level before, um, so he's very very supportive of me trying to finally go after another you know dream of mine. Well, go man, go. Good job. Uh, well, I I don't know his name, so I have to say, go man, go. <laughs> That's okay. His name is Kenny. Kami. Well, Kenneth, but we all call him Kenny. Yeah, K E N N Y. That's my brother's name, Kenneth. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Yeah, yeah. His name is Kenneth, but everybody calls him Kenny. Yeah. Yep. Yep. My mom calls him calls my brother Kenny as well. So you have a Kenny. That's yep. fantastic. Yep. Sandal Taylor, yep. and so, all right, so. As the the 2018 uh, Miss Pennsylvania, Mrs. Pennsylvania, where did you go from there? How did you how did you uh, spend your time as the reigning queen in in Pennsylvania? So, did you do any activities? It was amazing. So, as Miss Pennsylvania 2018, I did over a hundred appearances. Wow! So I kind of went everywhere, anywhere. I traveled to Mrs. America. So you compete at a week long competition for the title of Mrs. America. That was in Vegas. So that was truly amazing. And that's where I met those 52 sister Queens. Mm -hmm. And then as your year kind of winds down, you start actually preparing your, your next class, what they call it is a class of Queens that are coming in and you mentor them for the title. And I got the honor of, like I mentioned to you, kind of mentoring the first class of the new Miss title. Yeah. title holders so that was really cool because i got to crown both the miss for america and the new mrs pennsylvania america 2019 which was really cool and they're truly amazing women i had nothing to do with the judging and i'm so glad because they all seriously looked stunning on stage they were, are truly powerful women um i knew a lot of them outside of pageantry and mm-hmm. i'm just i'm glad that i had nothing to do with the judging because I wouldn't have known how to pick for sure because they were just phenomenal. But I'm, I'm, I love the queens that we have currently. They're truly um, amazing women, and I'm just, I was just really honored to be a part of their journey. Now, what are their activities? And out of the hundred or so uh, different events that you attended as as Mrs. Pennsylvania, what what kind of activities did you do? Did you go visit hospitals or or meet politicians or you know go and inspire other young ladies to to do what you do? 
I kind of did a little of all of that. So we volunteered. A lot of my um, things were volunteering. Mm-hmm. So for various functions, I volunteered for veterans. I do free haircuts. So I actually am working on starting my own nonprofit called the Haircut Project. Yeah. For, so for the past five to six years, I've been doing free haircuts for veterans, first responders, low income, homeless shelters, and just basically anybody who's in need of a haircut that can't afford one. Sweet. And so I spent a lot of time volunteering food banks, homeless shelters, veterans haircuts, you name it, we've done it. Um, we got to do some cool things, like we got to go to Kennywood, which is a local amusement park here. We got to go, I got to take my family to a Pittsburgh Tower game, a Steeler game. Yeah. I did advocate on Capitol Hill for CPR, and I don't know if you know this, but what was cool about it, I wasn't there, which I would have loved to be there, mm-hmm. but this past year, Pennsylvania became the 39th state to pass mandatory teaching of CPR in high schools, which is pretty cool. It's a Go really phenomenal thing because it's something they've been working on for a long time. So I got to do a little bit of everything from volunteering to getting out there to speaking to just kind of hit the ground running and tell everybody about what pageantry can do. That's something you can do. That's something anyone can do, really, is to get involved in your community. There's so much going on in, in your own backyard. And I'm so happy that to, to be talking to you, Sandal Taylor. You are, are an inspiration to not only the people in Pennsylvania, but now you're going beyond that. You, you've, you've gotten to, to see. Uh, and the haircut thing, what that reminded me of when I worked at the hospital in Miami, um, you know, I did that in my my reckless twenties as well. <laughs> but uh, uh, I remember there was a beautician that used to come in and cut the hair of the patients on the on the floors that were they were stuck there for months sometimes. And and just that little bit, just giving that that little bit of of making someone feel more like like themselves or like a person. You, getting a haircut, and, and I'm pretty sure a lot of people know when they get their haircut and have their nails done and, and, and you know, have get pampered a little bit, it makes you feel more human, to, to for lack of a better word. Is that something that, I mean, that's something that you probably experience on a daily basis uh, working in the beauty uh, industry. Is that right? That is correct. Um I started my, non- well, I'm working on starting my nonprofit because yeah. I really believe a haircut can change somebody's life. Yeah. So one thing that people don't know about me or most people don't know about me is at one point I was actually homeless. Mm. Um, so I actually went between a lot of different housings between my friends and family and living in my car at one point. Yeah. Um, and I went through a program called the Dress for Success program, which helps you kind of find work review your resume and get clothing to help you do an interview. But the one thing that they didn't have was a hair program. And a lot of the times your employer is going to look at you based off of that first look and decide whether to hire you or not. And statistically proven, they base it off a lot of your grooming. So how do you look for men, facial grooming, hair grooming, chest, if they have chest hair showing, you know, they look at all that. If you have hair on your hands and arms, you know, they look at all of that. And so, that really inspired me in a different way to give back because if it wasn't for that program helping me get back on my feet when I was homeless, then I wouldn't have been there. So it's just a way to kind of come full circle with it. And it's really phenomenal what a haircut can do for somebody. You never know where the, these conversations are going to go. What were the circumstances that, that made you homeless at, at, and for how long? Um, so not actually too long, but it was actually, I was leaving a domestic violence situation Yikes. and at the time it was something that I chose to do to save my life. Mm-hmm. And at the time, my son's life, who was, who was very, very young. Um, and I chose to leave. And so at that point I didn't have anywhere to go. I just took him and left. Mm. And that's a, a little bit of advice for the, the women out there. He, he shouldn't even hit you at least once, not once. Don't let them hit you. And, and um, So, yeah, and there, the violence comes in many different forms. So, right. for me, I was never actually physically right. assaulted. Right. Um, other than um, I did have a physical assault as far as um, what had happened to me was I was actually pushed into the wall. Hmm. And I had beer poured into my eyes whenever I was wearing contacts. And there's a lot of verbal and really more mental assault. Yeah. So, it comes in many different forms and it's not always visible. And it's not always there. And it happens to men and women. And yeah, I mean, it's 
I'm not going to sit here and say that was easy. It was definitely difficult, mm-hmm. and but it was probably the best decision. And you know, it's it's um, a little touchy to talk about it, but right, I'm, right. I'm glad that I was able to have a voice to speak about it. And I tell women all the time, you know, my circumstance led me to success. So I don't, I'm not, I don't look back on it. I'm not upset about it. I look at it and say, well, you know what? This is what happened. And it was, you know, regardless of why it happened, it is, you know, and this is what I was able to do from it. And I'm very thankful for the friends and the family that were there at the time that were able to kind of help me get back on my feet. Sandell Taylor, it sounds like you came out of that like a phoenix. <laughs> You've emerged and, and you became... I had a, a lot of help. I had a lot of help. I had a lot of clouds and a lot of sun and a lot of wind below me. <laughs> Fantastic. Fantastic. All right, Sandell Taylor. You've come out of hardships. You've had some good times, bad times. Everybody has has uh, certain hardships, and and uh, but it looks like you you're inspiring others to do great things. Uh, so, so where is what is Mrs. Germany, and how did you get the title of Mrs. Germany 2019, and where is that going to take you next? So. I, like I mentioned earlier, I did receive the title of Mrs. Germany just this month. Mm -hmm. I applied through the Mrs. World website, and I did have to supply proof of um, heritage. So they do have requirements. The first thing is that you're legally married, Mm -hmm. and the second thing is that you have either proof of your heritage and a valid passport. So in some cases, some people have dual citizenship. They were born in that country. In my case, I just had to prove my heritage, so I had to submit my dad's family information from where they were from and then I do also have a DNA test if they ever want it. They didn't ask me for it yet but they didn't use you know, that that's what mean that it was. So it's really an awesome opportunity, like I said, for those people who may not have been born somewhere, but like I said, who know a lot about their culture or who have that secondary culture within them to get out on that stage and have another way to compete. It's like a second chance, basically. Yeah. That competition is going to be held Uh, The finals are December 6th, and they're going to be held at the Westgate Hotel and Casino in Las Vegas. We will arrive probably about a week before that, probably like the Friday right after Thanksgiving, give or take a few days. And the whole week will be spent doing different things, a lot of rehearsing, a lot of sightseeing, a lot of getting to know the girls. And then we will have an interview day. I'm not sure exactly what day that is, probably around midweek. We'll have a preliminary night. That's the night where we first show the judges what we have, which is swimsuit and evening gown in our costume. Yeah. And then we will do finals as well. So we get to have a costume portion, which represents the country that we're from. So is your husband going to be able to go, go with you on that one? I'm sorry. Is your husband going to be able to go with you on that one? So he is planning on coming. We're not 100% sure yet. We're waiting on the date for his work. Well, um, it, my husband is in IT, so oh, okay. a lot of the times around Christmas, unfortunately, is when they want to make sure everything's ready for their Christmas break and holidays and stuff, so we're, we're waiting to hear some word on that. So he is planning on coming, but well, we have to wait and see. If he doesn't make it, where can he and the rest of us watch this, uh, this unfold, the Mrs. World in Las Vegas, December 6th? Yes. So the first thing I'm going to tell you guys is to stay tuned to the Mrs. World Facebook. So that's at Mrs. Base World because most of the time they do have it live streamed on their website. Mm. However, I do know that this past year at the Mrs. America pageant that they were having some trouble with the live stream. So there was just various people in the audience doing a Facebook live. So I would say for right now, until there's more details out about the live stream event, to tune into the Mrs. World Facebook and or the Mrs. World Instagram. All right. I'll be looking for that, and I'll definitely put that Facebook page in the show notes so people know where to go. Uh, Any other avenue? I love it. Oh, any any other avenues you want to take, Sandell Taylor? You've you've given us so much out here. Okay, I mean, I see Mrs. Germany 2019, Mrs. Pennsylvania uh, 2018, national motivational speaker. Where where have you done that? Where have you motivated? 
Absolutely. So I've been honored to be a keynote speaker at a couple of different events locally. The last speaking event that I did was actually called the Simply Red event. And I've spoken other places, but that's probably the biggest, bigger of them recently. And I was the keynote speaker. They did a fundraiser for the American Heart Association. So I was able to keynote speak about heart health and why it's so important to get out there and get yourself educated. And it was really, really fun because I like to get the audience involved when I speak. So I was trying to get everybody to um, kind of just participate. So I always start off my keynote speaking with, you know, if you yourself have been affected by heart disease, I'm going to ask you to stand up. I'm and then up. I go, you know, if you or your family members or someone that you know has been affected by heart disease, I would ask you to stand up. I'm standing up still. And then as I continue, you kind of get the whole room to stand up. And then I have everybody take a look around and just really see that the majority of the room is going to be standing up. Mm -hmm. And once you kind of get that effect on people, you have their attention. Um, And it was really humbling to see it it in person and to really experience that. So. That was really fun. But I go all across the country and speak about heart health, modeling, traveling, whatever it is. Um, I could pretty much talk about it. I'm so excited for you. So many things to come. Uh, so, much, so much on the horizon and so much that you've done already. Uh, and you have the support of uh, Kenny, Kenneth. Hey, that's fantastic. And the kids. It sounds like you have a great family. You have a great life going for you, Sandal Taylor. Uh, now, y- you have another page that has a different spelling of your name. Uh, which one do you prefer? Yep. Or um, which, so I which one do you want my, me to, to my, put on the show notes? My, yep, I use my pageant page the most, which is the Sandell Taylor, which currently it's listed under Mrs. Pennsylvania America 2018 on Facebook mm-hmm. because I can't change the title yet. I'm working on that. Mm-hmm. And then Instagram, it's just Sandell Taylor. Mm-hmm. It's all one. I do go by another name, which is Sindel, which is S-I-N-D-E-L, because people can't pronounce my first name, and that's <laughs> like my model name, so okay. it's S-I-N-D-E-L. You can find me anywhere. If you find me and follow me, it doesn't matter which page. I try to keep them all updated, but I did try to separate my modeling from pageantry just because at one point, like I said, I it was really two different things, but now that they're becoming more and more one, they're kind of merging in and kind of going from there. Yeah, your worlds are coming together. And <laughs> that happens to me a lot because <laughs> I, 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 I too like to have my fingers in many different pots. I, I get bored pretty easily if I just do one thing over and over. So I'm so glad that you, you're you involved with the, the heart health. Uh, you're an advocate for that. Uh, d- do you get involved with the American Heart Association at all or is that – I do, yes. I volunteer at a lot of those yes. events, so there's going to be an upcoming Heart Walk coming on soon. Cool. There is a carnival that's coming up that's going to be raising money for the Heart Association. Um, I'm actually working on actually starting the Empowered to Serve program here in my local area. Um, so it's a small educational class, so to speak, that can be held kind of anywhere and each class teaches you something simple and different about heart health, which is perfect for me because that's what I do is teach and advocate. So it kind of combines both of them together. Um, And that's going to be coming up here shortly. Like I said, I'm hoping to get those started here locally as well as do them throughout the country and hopefully internationally too. So excited for you, Sandal Taylor. Thank you so much for chit-chatting with me on the What Makes You Famous podcast. Any other things you, any other avenues or any other last words for the people? Honestly, if I could leave anybody with a last word, it would be my most famous quote that I live by, which would be, try to be like a pineapple. Stand tall, wear a crown on your head, and be sweet on the inside. I love that thing because it just reminds you that your crown is always there, man, woman, or child. We all have an invisible crown to remind everybody to be sweet on the inside. It allows you to be kind and caring. And just to remember, be proud of who you are. No one else can be you. So go out and be you and be proud. 
I like that so much, Sandow Taylor. That's a perfect way to end. Thank you so much for being a part of the show and and sharing your story. I look forward to spending more time with you in the future as you become Mrs. Germany and and beyond. Uh, how you know? I, I I hope you come back on the show. I would love to come back on the show. Thank you again so much for having me. And again, so much for dealing with my little delay there. I apologize again for being a little a little <laughs> late, but I so, so, so appreciate you having me. And I, I look forward to it. And I'm, I'm just honored that you allowed me to come on your show. Well, there you have it, party people. Sandal Taylor beauty queen and so much more advocate for heart health and motivational speaker she was mrs pennsylvania america 2018 and now mrs germany 2019 and ready to compete on december 6th there in las vegas for the miss world all the best to you sandal taylor thank you so much for being a part of the show and sharing your story i look forward to speaking with you again real soon if you'd like to tell your story yes you i'm talking to you the listener i encourage you give me a call at 501-470-6386 or Email info at radio what.com. That's it for this edition of the What Makes You Famous program. It's Keys Dan with radio what.com, DJ Little Rock.com. Peace. I'm out of here. Radio What, the music you want. Hey guys, this is Shelly G with a fast fact. The world's first travel agencies were Cox and Keys, founded in 1758, and Thomas Cook founded in 1850. Do you have a fast fact? Share it with us at Interactive Radio, radio radiowhat.com. Hey, Keys Dan. What you doing? My line. I'm playing the best music by request. 24 hours a day. Click on the request tab at the top of radiowhat.com. Radiowhat.com. Radio